you all for being here. I think most, whatever I had to say, you have already said it. And this um, documentary is very, very revealing. But I'm going to talk about a couple of things. It's like uh, the myth. You know, like um, 350,000 Kashmiri Pandits left of their own in 1990. First and foremost, they did not leave the valley. They were forced to leave by Islamic terrorists, some within and mostly from Pakistan. It started with targeted killings of Hindus, gang rapes of women, as you already heard. I'm not going to go through that again. Another myth is that the then governor Jagmohan, he asked Kashmiri Pandits to leave Kashmir. So all Muslims in Kashmir would be massacred without harming Pandits. Now tell me, good propagators, please explain as to what channels of communication were used by Jagmohan to convince Kashmiri Pandits dispersed all over the valley to leave their home in Hurth. Kashmiri Pandits do not have any centralized leader like Muslims do. They don't have an Imam, they don't have a Mufti, nor do they attend Khutbas or abide by Farmans. Killings of Hindus and Sikhs and few moderate Muslims. It was a regular feature of insurgency in Jammu and Kashmir. There were various gruesome massacres which can never be forgot. And uh, according to the uh, report submitted by the state of Jammu and Kashmir to the National Human Rights Commission, uh, 719 Kashmiri Pandits were killed in 1989-1990 and uh, in fact the state government is yet to disclose the identity of about 400 dead bodies which were recovered by the police and disposed of at its will. There were many more killings of our soldiers, destruction of temples and properties as you, as you just saw as Ubhar already mentioned. As we all know, in August 2019, the Indian government revoked the special status of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir in order to fully integrate the state within India and put the state's citizens on an equal footing with the citizens of the country. Since that time, there have been numerous articles in the media that have heavily criticized the government of India. All these articles have focused narrowly on Muslims of Kashmir and portrayed them as victims of domination of a resurgent Hindu India. History confirms that the Hindus of Kashmir have suffered tremendously since Islam was brought in Kashmir by Muslim invaders in the 12th century. The revocation of the spatial status of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir to fully integrate the state within India is a first step in righting the wrongs of history. Hopefully one day the indigenous people of Kashmir will be able to return to their home and Kashmir will once again become the beacon of plurality and fountainhead of Hindu philosophy, art and culture. We at the Indo-American Community Federation and Kashmiri Overseas Association held a very powerful briefing on the Capitol Hill which was on October 16th. It was attended by a record number of 200 people and there were seven members of Congress. Subsequently, there were two more hearings by Brad Sherman and Tom Lantos. I am sure all of you are aware of that. The U.S. House Affairs Committee Hearing on South Asia human rights, it unfolded <coughs> along expect lines. As has become the norm in the United States of America, such hearings are not conducted with the intention of uncovering the truth of matters, but are seen as an opportunity for moral grandstanding with an eye on gaining political mileage from them. India is being demonized 
And the recent resolution by uh, Representative uh, Pramila Jaipal, I'm sure all of you are aware of that. And it was introduced on December 6th. Uh, it's, I mean, what's more appalling is that there are seven Democrats who are co-sponsors of this bill right in our backyard. I mean, there are total 41, uh, I think 46 or 41 uh, members of uh, uh, Congress who unfortunately, they're all Democrats, who have co-sponsored Premila Jaipal's bill. But in our own backyard, we have uh, very powerful, with highest job approval rating, these Congress members are right here in our backyard. And what are we doing about it? Absolutely nothing. We met Congresswoman Anna Ishu a dozen times in 1995. She understood the situation, not only in Kashmir, but in India. There was a lot of, lot of issues that time, human rights issues. And, and she has been supporting us all along. Same is true with so many other members of Congress that you are aware of. Congressman Pallone or Sharad, Senator Sharad Brown. And we have Ed Royce, who has retired now. Uh, there's so many others. But what it took was education. It was like going to them, educating them, telling them, this is the real story. Uh, instead of intimidating them, instead of telling them that you are just a piece of crap, I think it doesn't work in this system. It does not work in this system. And this system, what works is that you have to go and educate them about the real situation. And uh, some of these seven members, these Democrats, they attended our briefing on the Capitol Hill. You know, like Zoe Lofgren and several others. But you know, they, they, they have to know more about the situation. I mean, certainly they have these the lobbyists and these other people, they just tell them, oh, they're killing everybody in Kashmir, everybody is being killed and all that. So they obviously, they feel that the human rights issues are so overwhelming and they just don't understand the, the, the true story. So I suggest that, that a comprehensive strategic plan of action uh, you know, should be there to assist the forces against terrorism. And anyone who is interested in this room, uh, you want to join, you know, we'll go and we'll meet each one of them. You know, we know them, all of them personally and we can go and we can start educating them the same way we did in the 90s. Let me also take this opportunity to thank our partnering organizations, Association of Indo-Americans. Uh, we have, I see, uh, we have Prasad and, uh, you know, Vijay Asuri and uh, Lebon Matthews, Rajesh Nair, Ram Tota, Arjuna Pandaji and uh, Viruji and we have you know, people here. We are also very grateful to Gopio. I see a few people here from Gopio. And, um, uh, you know, we have Raj Banerjee here. Uh, and by the way, uh, this is the 30th Exodus year we are commemorating today. But we have been doing this almost every year. And uh, we have been going to Sunnyvale Hindu Temple. We have been going to, uh, you know, we have our Acharya Pandeji here, and we have been going there. We, we have been going to these places, and they have always supported us uh, so much. Uh, Raj Banerjee actually, he co-hosted uh, our few other events where some of you were there. And uh, we're very grateful to Raj Banerjee and uh, Krishna Pandeji. Uh, and uh, I see here Upender Nazir. <laughs> It's, it reminded me of uh, our, uh, right here, uh, it reminded me of the symposium we did in uh, year 2001 and you came all the way from Kansas. Was it Kansas or? Minneapolis. Uh, Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And you helped so much in putting that together. Uh, so, you know, all these memories and these are, these are sad memories. Uh, we have Mr. Gia Sete here. <laughs> I remember that a cold morning of uh, 1993 probably. Right? Three or four. And we just went and had a demonstration against uh, San Jose Mercury. 
because they were not covering us at all. And uh, so we went early morning and uh, uh, and then we had a we had a nice article they wrote about uh, you know the Kashmiri Pandit issue. Uh, so I think uh, uh, you know. Uh, what else uh, can I say uh, other than uh, just thank you so much, uh, um, you know, Dr. Deepak Sajdev is going to be singing soon and he has been always, uh, you know, a great support. He has always been there. Uh, did I forget any organization, any person? I must have. I'm not too good, but <laughs> Dr. Kanda is there. Uh, you know, I see a board of directors. Uh, they are all here. They have always supported. Anytime we do anything related to Kashmir, they never say anything. They say yes, approved. So, thank you so much. Uh, I would, uh, now I'm going to, Dr. Salwan is right in front of me. <laughs> and I'm forgetting someone and Vijayaji who have all the time supported with, you know, financially everything. And uh, thank you, Dr. Salwan. And I would request now our Vice Mayor, Honorable Vice Mayor of Fremont, Dr. Raj Sarvan, please come and just uh, say a few words. Um, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity. I'll keep my comments brief in respect for the program. Uh, the Kashmiri community has a great ambassador in uh, Jeevan Zushi. Yes. <laughs> Because for many of us, especially the second generation, the only way we know this issue is through him. And he has raised this issue for the past 30 years uh, in the city of Fremont and all over the globe. And so uh, I'm very thankful that uh, he's taken this initiative and finally uh, this issue is coming closer to a resolution. We still have a lot more work to do. And uh, I commend everybody for uh, this effort. Um, I'm also here to commemorate the 30 years of exodus for the Kashmiri people. Uh, this has been a great sacrifice, and Kashmiris have taken a lot for the entire India, and I hope that uh, we can all work together to help uh, heal this issue, and uh, I appreciate all the stories and the struggles that uh, all of you had and to suffer. So thank you for having me, and I look forward to learning more from you. Thank you. May I request uh, Raj Banorji to please come and say a few words? <laughs> 